Alright, you're welcome to Amazing Minds, Zambia's first late night show. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that bell and share. Uh, we're so grateful to every new subscriber that has joined us on this channel. Uh, we do surely hope that you're enjoying the content that you get to see here. Today is Friday Bible Talks and once again I will not take too much of your time doing the intros and whatnot. You know that the show is available Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time right here on YouTube and the podcast is available on Google Podcasts. Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Mondays are for political commentary. Wednesday is the educative segment of the show and Friday is Bible Talks like today. So if you are following the Bible Talks series, then you will know that we've been doing the Gifts of the Spirit series, or as the King James would call it, the Manifestation of the Spirit. And these Gifts of the Spirit being nine, um, we've covered a number of them so far. Today we are doing the second last part but as i told you last week when we discussed discerning of spirits that uh, we're going to combine the gifts the last two gifts um even though we're going to combine these two last gifts we are going to break it in two parts so this is a part one of, of the gifts we're discussing today. And we're going to do a part two of the gifts uh, we'll be discussing today, next week. So please do subscribe, hit that bell and share. I hope you have loved the series so far, uh, what we have discussed about the gifts. You'll notice that from the beginning, I've been trying to establish how that each gift of the spirit is not a new manifestation. Neither is it a a reflection of what the entirety of such a manifestation would be. But each gift is a momentary access into a much larger reality. So when we talk about the gifts of healings, we are getting a momentary access into divine health, which is a more, a more permanent uh, state of being. If you are living in life, then you're able to supply that life to someone else in form of a gift of a gift of healing or the gifts of healings and in the same way if you're leaving exempt from certain laws of nature having been elevated spiritually then uh, you will find it easy to work miracles and these will be momentary entry points into an actual reality in the in the world of god where God dwells in the realm of God in heaven. Uh, there's no disease, no sickness. It's a reality. What we experience here as miracles are a reality there. So what we are doing when we exercise the spiritual gifts is momentarily stepping into these realities. The Bible in the book of Hebrews tells us that there are powers of the age to come that we would have tasted in this age. So these powers of the age to come can momentarily expose themselves uh, through these channels, the nine gifts of the spirit. And of course, we know that there are many, many more manifestations that may not be, uh, that may not be restricted to the nine gifts of the spirit. All right, uh, we, we must get into it. Hope you brought your shout and clothes tonight. This is going to be interesting. I will not take too much of your time. I'll try to do it as as quickly as I can to explain to you about uh, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues. And not only will I tell you about the gift, but I'll tell you about uh, the whole idea of tongues, praying in tongues, speaking in tongues. I'm going to give you a bit of history uh, into how we came to this place of speaking in tongues. And I pray that the Lord will open your heart to understand uh, give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Some of you may be watching this much later than the day I'm recording it because of the, as at the time of recording, 
you probably weren't sure of whether you should listen to me or not. Uh, maybe still wondering on what basis I'm bringing to you this information. Uh, yeah, but the time will come when you will listen to this. Some of you much later, some of you much sooner. And you will realize that it is food for the spirit. It will help you grow, uh, help you exercise your spirituality with more precision when you get to understand some of these truths I'm sharing with you in, in this series of teachings. So we discuss the gifts of healings, the gift of faith, the gift of prophecy. Um, interpret, uh, we, we discussed discerning of spirits. We discussed um, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. And today we're discussing uh, tongues. So I'm going to read you the first scripture from, from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'll read from verse 4 to 11. It says, There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. So that's the base scripture that we've been discussing since the first part of this series, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 4 all the way to verse 11, which describes the nine gifts that the Holy Spirit distributes uh, to each one within the body for the benefit of all. So the gifts of the Spirit being the Holy Spirit manifesting um, the power that he has deposited in us. Remember that Jesus said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you uh, and you shall go witnessing into the world. I'm, 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 I'm paraphrasing. So Jesus Christ promised that the Holy Spirit would come with power, that when we receive the Holy Spirit, we will receive power, right? And now this branch of the Spirit's work gifts is a branch through which he demonstrates his power in an organized fashion. So the gifts of the spirit are available to every believer who has believed in Jesus Christ and has received the Holy Spirit. Now, in order for you to, 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 to have a better and clearer understanding of this gift of uh, different kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues, I'd like to take you, I'd like to take you back to the beginning, all the way to the beginning when God decided to make man and put him in the earth and give him dominion over the earth. And we'll briefly discuss what the intention was, what the purpose was, and we're going to further discuss what happened and what led uh, to events that followed. Uh, to begin with Genesis chapter one, verse, verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God decided, let us make man in our image after our likeness. The first thing to understand is that God was not uh, within earth or within heaven before he created them. When God created the heavens and the earth, he was outside of them. And when you critically think about it and analyze the past before the creation of the heavens and the earth, there was never a time when God never existed, or a time when nothing existed. The fact that God dwells in eternity means he has no beginning and no end. So if you are imagining and you begin to think that 
there was a point when God appeared on the scene, then you would be mistaken. That wouldn't be God that you'd be thinking about. So God being eternal, Father, Word, Spirit, never alone. If there's one thing God has always had, it's fellowship. Never alone. Everything that God has instructed us to do, he has practiced it himself. So remember Jesus praying and saying, let them be one, just as you and I are one. Let them experience fellowship as you and I experienced fellowship from the beginning. This is me paraphrasing again, but that's in John chapter 17 when Jesus prayed for the church. And when you, when you, when you think about these things, you realize that when God created the heavens and the earth, there were purposes. And in God creating the earth, there was a, a specific purpose. God having, the book of Proverbs, Proverbs says, he obtained wisdom from the beginning of his way. So God being wise, being understanding, having developed knowledge, decided to create a place, a world outside of himself and put beings outside of himself that came from him that would reflect not only his image, but his likeness. So the image of these beings that he would put in this world would be a reflection of his spiritual nature, his likeness. So God creates physical beings in a physical world and puts his likeness, spirit in them. And their image becomes a reflection of God's likeness. So let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And now what happens after that is that God begins to take man on a, on a journey learning about his new found home, earth. God begins to teach him about the garden, to instruct him on every tree that he can eat and which trees he cannot eat. And God begins to walk him through the whole process of animals, the naming of animals. And there's a, a good mentorship that's, that's going on between the Lord and Adam, right? And after having us, uh, done this mentorship for a long time, and the Lord is assessing Adam's pro progress, he begins to come up with a conclusion that it is not good for man to be alone. And therefore God puts Adam into a deep sleep and from him comes Eve. Now, before the whole process of the purpose for why God put them on the earth could begin, Adam disobeyed. Adam and his wife disobeyed. And so, this dominion we read about in this scripture, let them have dominion, was lost. Because when God questioned Adam, Adam blamed his wife, who later blamed the serpent, therefore transferring responsibility over the instruction, the one instruction, the one law that existed, the one instruction that defined right and wrong. That was a mandate on the earth, a do and don't that existed in the earth, a place where responsibility could be exercised, the responsibility over the earth. Someone had to be answerable over the earth. And that was Adam because he received that instruction. But Adam passed on that responsibility from himself of being answerable over the earth to his wife who passed it on to the serpent and the serpent kept, him, kept it to himself. So this dominion having been passed over prompted God to step in in his personal capacity. God who had given dominion already had to step in in his mercy, in his personal capacity, right? And introduce the idea of a second Adam. But this second Adam would not only come and repair the mistake that the first Adam had made. This second Adam was going to actually complete the assignment of Adam by finally preparing the earth for God's kingdom to relocate to the earth. 
I'll do a series of teaching on this separately on the kingdom of God, some history, some current and some future in order for us to understand the kingdom of God and God's purposes. So the second Adam was meant to not only, not only undo what Adam had done, but to establish God's kingdom in the earth. Remember that God planted a garden. Normally, what do we plant? We plant seeds, right? We plant a seed and we expect a tree to grow in a couple of years. We water it and we attend to the, to the tree because of the seed that we planted. God's seed instead was a garden that he planted. God planted this uh, garden and put a man in the garden in order for not only the man to multiply, but for the garden to multiply. Hence, creating an environment in a physical world conducive to host the spiritual kingdom of God. And Adam failed at that assignment. So Jesus, the second Adam, was promised in order for him to, to fulfill this assignment. Now, remember, we're dealing with diverse kinds of tongues. Now, let, let, me, let me show you something. Let me show you a scripture still in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 11. I'll read from verse 1 to 9. Now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shina and dwelt there. Then they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and break them thoroughly. They had brick for stone and they had asphalt for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. And this is what they began to and this that they began, and this is what they begin to do now. Nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad for their, from there over the face of the earth, of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore, its name is called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Now, notice that from, from, from some of the first rebellions in the Bible, when Cain killed his brother, the first thing that he went to do was to build a city, a city called Enoch, right? And after the flood um, of, of Noah came a man who was a great hunter before the Lord. His name was Nimrod. And this Nimrod led the quest to build the Tower of Babel, the city. And this quest to build a city continued if you, if you go all the way to Babylon and you go all the way to the book of Revelation. It talks about the modern day Babylon because there's a city. There's a city. There's a city that the enemy has always strived to build. That is an intersection point. There is a city that the enemy, an environment the enemy has always tried to build. That is an intersection point between the natural and the spiritual. Now, think, think about it. How many tall buildings do we have in this day and age? I mean, we've got the, the, the Burj Khalifa in, in the United Arab Emirates now. And we have tall, 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 tall buildings all over the world. How many of those buildings which have even gone into the clouds have caused the Lord God to come down and say, look at the wonder of what these sons of men are building. How many of those buildings? This is to understand that there was something peculiar about this building that they were trying to, that they were trying to build. When you, when, you, when you study this subject further, you realize that Nimrod had an offense in his heart towards the Lord for having killed the whole earth and wanted to build a city that cannot be flooded. And now 
what happened is that in order for God to disunite the building of such a kingdom, to stop the establishment of a kingdom in the earth. You see, there's been a fight for a kingdom. Not only has, been, has there been a fight for a kingdom, but a fight for a name. They say, let us build this city that we may make a name for ourselves. Right? That we may make a name for ourselves. Now, interesting enough, these two things are the very things that God promised Jesus, that God gave to Jesus, a kingdom that shall not pass away and a name that is above every name. And right after Babel happened and God confused their languages, I hope you're following me, follow me, don't, don't lose me. And God confused their languages. God establishes a covenant with a man of his choice and tells him that he will make him a great name. So Nimrod wanted to make a name for himself by building Tower of Babel. But God tells Abram that he will make him a great name and even changes his name to Abraham, which is father of many nations. Do you see that? So God then establishes his covenant with Abraham and promises a blessing to the whole world through Abraham's seed. Right? So we're talking about how God replaces the kingdom of Babel with the promise of a different kingdom that would come through Abraham's seed. Now, fast forward, because we're not discussing all that, we're discussing diverse kinds of tongues. Fast forward, Jesus Christ, the promised seed, comes. The second Adam, he finally arrives. And guess what his message, guess what his message was? Mark chapter 1, verse 14 to 16. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Now, Jesus consistently talked about how the kingdom of God has come. The kingdom of God is at hand. Why? Because he had arrived. Jesus himself is the promised kingdom. And this kingdom... The rock that shall be thrown upon the earth and become a mountain, Jesus Christ, is the establishment of a kingdom contrary to that which Nimrod wanted to build. And the kings of the earth always strove to build. This is the kingdom contrary to Babylon. Are you following me? Are you following me? Now, interesting enough, Jesus Christ comes, dies on the cross of Calvary and says, all right, now I'm going. And the disciples are wondering, ah, you are supposed to establish a kingdom. How can you live so soon? But Jesus makes some very interesting statements. He says, do not go and preach what you have been told, but wait here in Jerusalem until you have received the Holy Spirit. Now, prior to that, before Jesus even died, when you read the book of John, he talked about how the Holy Spirit will come when he goes. And he says, it is beneficial for you that I go because if I do not go, the Holy Spirit will not come. So Jesus placed such importance on the Holy Spirit coming to earth that it was necessary that he had to die in order for the Spirit of God to come. Now, for me, it's very interesting that Jesus, when he came to the earth, number one, preached the kingdom of God. He said the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom that from the very beginning, the enemy had been trying to create a contrary to. Enoch is the city that, that Cain built and named after his own son. Babel, the city that they wanted to. And interesting enough, there were always names attached to these cities and kingdoms. Uh, Babel, the, the, the kingdom, the city they wanted to build that would give them a name. And we can go down all the way to Babylon and the kingdoms as they came down uh, uh, Greece and uh, the Persians and Medes. And we can talk about uh, the Roman Empire all the way down to our modern day Babylon, right? Now, God sends his son, Jesus Christ, to establish the everlasting kingdom. 
And Jesus Christ, before establishing this kingdom, says, before we do this, you need to receive the Holy Spirit. So I will go to prepare a place for you, but I will send the Holy Spirit from the Father. Now, let's have a look at what happens when the Holy Spirit arrives. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each one of them and they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance now it's important for me to have given you a background a history into god establishing a kingdom in the earth which is God's intended purpose for the earth to establish his kingdom to tabernacle within the earth so God has always wanted to dwell with his people in the earth right and in order to do this he will have to establish his kingdom within the earth now interesting before when you think about it when the British when the British kingdom decided to invade countries and take them under colonial rule. One of the first things the kingdom did was to send governors that would first of all introduce the language. Now I take you back to Babel because Babel was the establishment of a contrary kingdom to the everlasting kingdom of Christ. And the one tool that they had was language. The fact that they had not only one language, but one speech, it means their thoughts were headed in the same direction. They had one speech, they, they, what this one wanted, the neighbor wanted, and they had one language to go with it. And this way they were able to facilitate for the building of an intersection city that will take them into the heavens. Now, when we talk about the heavens, of course, we're not talking about a geographical location upward. We could in some contexts, but we're talking about a different realm of existence, a different reality to cross into a different reality because they've created a portal, which is a physical location. Right? And so God decides to confuse their languages. And now in order for God to reestablish such a channel where human beings can come together with one speech and one language, he sent the governor of the kingdom to come and first of all give us a language. So when we talk about diverse kinds of tongues, we're talking about a distribution of languages that classify us into one speech, group us into one speech, with which we will say, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are building a new city, ladies and gentlemen, a different city, a city that is representative of the everlasting kingdom, as opposed to that city of Babel. And along with that, we've been given a name that is greater than any name. As I say to you, this is uh, part one. We will definitely get into part two, where I'm going to explain to you now the details of what diverse kinds of tongues are, the interpretation of tongues, how these gifts operate, and the difference between the gifts and praying in tongues, because these things are described in the Bible as well. So today I've given you uh, a bit of a history on the establishment of God's kingdom and just what place speech has, what we say with our mouths, our language, what place it has in the establishment. You see, in order to bring in a new culture, you have to change the language to introduce an environment of heaven, the culture of heaven in the earth, a new language has to be introduced by the governor. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe, hit that notification bell and share. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. 
hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao!